reached out to Johanna. She was like, sure, what's it about? Depression. I'm like, great, <laughs> you know, right up, right up our alley, you know. But I said, I wanted to do one that was based on that, but like not someone that you're like drained at the end. I felt so fortunate that I got so much trust um, to kind of color the songs any way that I wanted to. It was almost like I needed to have the high point in order to start finding the hues that would make this musical sound whole. We both wanted um, string quartet, so that was, that was a non-negotiable. And since it was a pop rock type of style, we did guitar, bass, drums. I write for and I play piano, so it was a really um, kind of given that it would be lush piano score. Poets and people expressing the ideas about a rose and how red the rose is and all that kind of thing and they talk about it in, in superfluous language and explore it from all these different sides but she was going for this idea that's similar in what this music accomplishes which is to say that if you were to express the same thing in repetition it forces you to re-articulate the interpretation in your mind this type of music does that too you know i want a demon song an angel song and we sort of talked it out and she wrote all the music first. You learn that both are a part of you and that you just learn to, uh, you know, stay the course and know that it's okay. There's nothing wrong about not being happy all the time, you know. Tyler came through and said, let's make that uh, your character a painter, an artist, because their, their imaginations run wild and imagine a character that running wild, you know, and everything's color, and then all of a sudden having color stripped away from you. When I write music, I also often like to write in color. So when I was writing these four songs, I tried to put in sounds that make me think of grayscale, and I tried to also incorporate sounds that bring more color and joy. And when I found out later on that that was also something um, that was in the director's vision and what you'll see in the special effects, it just felt almost serendipitous that we all had thought about the theme of Greyland in the same way, even before the title was known to any of us. I didn't necessarily know organically that I was the director and then as I was listening to it and responding to what actually did show up, I was really focusing on the last suite of music and recognizing that I had um, effectively like three characters who are expressing and re-expressing and re-articulating um, kind of the same idea. And the producing has been such an easy thing and then so it allowed me in retrospect to be, when it was time to be an actor, to just act. I didn't have to worry about the other hats because I had people that I trusted and I knew that, oh, they're, they're handling this the way that I would handle it. So I can relax and give my best performance as an actor. I thought that the challenge was is to not make the character one, one color, you know? That even in being, playing a character with depression, that there were still multiple colors happening through the performance to keep it real and interesting for someone to connect to because even though there's, like I said, even though you may be sad, depressed, and wanting to get out and having this internal battle, there's still a fight going on inside. There, there's more people able to take a risk on something original uh, in film. A lot of shows, they, you know, they just close and that's that. And you have to be reliant on an album or photos. But with film, it's done. And it can be watched essentially for eternity. All in all, this project made me fall in love with the beauty of the power of film. And I, I can't wait to see um, what happens next. Ha, 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 ha.